So, brothers and sisters, lalo yung mga sisters natin, pag mayroong medyo nakaka-intriga, huwag nyo nang pansinin. Amen? If there's something intriguing, instead of, and it's like a rumor, instead of listening to it and, and passing it on, stop it right there. And pray for that person that's being talked about. And pray for the person talking about that person. Amen? Because propagating that rumor or that intrigue will not do any good. So we must stop it and pray for those people. And pray for yourself as well that you would not be brought into that. See, Satan deceived Eve. And when she took a bite of the forbidden fruit, she thought, hey, this is not too bad. I did not, nothing happened to me. I did not get struck down by God. I was not, nothing happened. And sometimes sin is like that. It takes you one bite at a time. One bite at a time. Oh, nothing's happening. God is not striking me dead. <laughs> I can do more. That's his presence, a little bit more. Next thing you know, you've dug the trench so deep, you could not even see light anymore. That's how deceiving the enemy is. That's what happens when we choose light. I mean, when we choose death over light. When we choose darkness over light. You see, it was a choice. Eve could have chosen not to eat from the tree of knowledge. It would have been incomplete anyway. What other knowledge can the enemy provide that was not in God already? Amen? God is all-knowing. So whatever knowledge we need, whatever wisdom we need, is already in him. We just need to ask. Just like Solomon asked him. And Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. Amen? Adam could have, been, could have chosen to be stronger in his faith and stand against the trial. But instead, he chose to buckle under the allure of the pride of knowing good and evil. He had to buckle. Siguro kinembutan to at kinendata ni Eva. Maybe the wife, uh, Eva, uh, was winking at him. Maybe Eva was, you know, oh, try this one. I, I'm not even going to try because you'll just laugh at me. <laughs> Try this. It's really good. Nothing happened to me. But you see, the covenant was with Adam and God. Eve, when she sinned, was still under the covering of Adam. That's why nothing happened to her yet. She can still ask forgiveness. But when Adam took that bite, the covenant was broken. Disobedience happened. That's how sin entered the world. I'm sure their intentions was good. I mean, what's wrong with finding more about God, about the world? What's wrong with finding more knowledge? Nothing seems to be wrong with that. But see, the command of God was not to eat from the tree. That was what was broken. God was not saying you cannot have knowledge. He was saying you cannot eat from this tree of knowledge. It was a choice. They chose to disobey God. But we can also choose to abide in God instead. You see, apart from God, there is no good in us. Yes, we can do good things because God put that ability in us first. Remember, we were created in His image and likeness. That includes goodness. We are able to do good. This is why we can enjoy food. Right? Amen. Sabi ni Sambrad, Naku po. Yan. Because God wants us to enjoy life. But without His presence, we are prone to follow our fleshly desires rather than what the Spirit longs for. We do good for the wrong reasons. It's usually pride. It's usually selfishness. After the fall of man at the Garden of Eden, the natural state of all human beings became spiritual death. 
Sin separates us from the presence of God, and it's universal. All of us are by nature children of wrath. And all of us are in active rebellion against God. When we sinned, the earth became subject to the evil rule of Satan. Remember, God gave us dominion over the earth. And when, we, when Adam took a bite of that apple or that forbidden fruit, some said it's from again, he gave that authority back or away to Satan. That's why even though God created the world and he said everything that is in it is good, now there is evil in the world. There is sin. God created all that we see, which is good and perfect. But because of sin, Satan now rules over the earth. When we do not have that relationship with God the Father through Jesus' His Son, as directed by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are then given unto our sinful selves and our sinful desires. Because God is holy and just, those who are wicked cannot be in His presence. God shows His anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppresses the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. Sometimes the simplest things are the ones right in front of us and we don't see it. Romans chapter 1 says, continues in verse 20, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing. We have no excuse at all. In Paul's letter to the Romans, especially these verses, Paul answers a common objection to belief in God. And it's, sometimes I get stumped by this question as well. It says, how could a loving God how could a loving God send anyone to hell? Especially someone who has never heard about Christ. But you see, in these verses, Paul points out, the Apostle Paul points out that God has revealed himself plainly in the creation to all people. The whole world, the skies, the stars, everything in it declares of his goodness. All people have an inner sense of what God requires, but they choose not to live up to it. It's always a choice. I always look at people as, as ourselves as water. We're like water. You know, it takes the path of least resistance. <laughs> if you see water flowing down, trickling from the mountains, you see it when it hits an obstacle, like a rock or a root, it will find another route down, which is easier path of least resistance and sometimes when we have troubles in life trials in life that's what happens we find the path of least resistance it's easier to not take that test because maybe you have the chance to flunk it's easier to not listen to him because it's so hard to follow him. Now you see, when you are driven by your fleshly desires, it truly is hard to follow God. But when you listen to the power of the Holy Spirit and yield to the Spirit, it actually is much easier. But to put it another way, man's moral standards are always better than their behavior. In other words, what we know is right What, we know what is right, but we still to choose to do wrong. If people suppress God's truth in order to live their own way, they have no excuse. They know the truth, and they will have to endure the consequences of ignoring it. And this is what the world is teaching us. It's teaching the kids, our youth, especially those who are going to public school. Whatever is good to you, you can do it. Whatever seems nice, you can do it. As long as you're not hurting other people. It sounds good. It sounds nice. It sounds well. 
But then, if our, sinful, if our nature by default is sinful, then what comes out of it? Something sinful. Something that's not good. This is why we must yield to God. We must yield to the Holy Spirit. Whatever morality we have today, whatever knowledge of good we have today, is based on the goodness of God. Without Him, if you take away God, what else do you have? Everything is permissible. Everything is permissible. See, some people wonder why we need evangelists and missionaries but you see, if we wonder, why do we need missionaries, evangelists, and pastors, and teachers when everything in the world declares of God's goodness? Everything through nature declares of God's goodness. But you see, although people know that God exists, our wickedness blinds us from the truth. Evangelists and missionaries sensitively expose our sin and point them to Christ. It's not about condemning people. It's about showing People, there is a choice. There is another option. We don't have to live a sinful life. We don't have to live a life that is full of misery, that is full of anger, that is full of hatred, that is full of everything that is bad in the world. We can choose to have a good life. And that is through God. Although people may believe that there is a God, we refuse to commit ourselves to God. And that's what we have, evangelists and missionaries to help persuade others by sharing God's word, by pointing out the dangerous consequences of our actions. Sometimes it's all about not knowing it, not knowing what will happen to us. Because we're always taught that if you do good, it's okay. You'll, you'll have a good life. But then there's also eternal consequences. And sometimes that's left out. Evangelists and missionaries help the church obey the great commission of the Lord. Most importantly, although nature reveals God's reveals God, people need to be told about Jesus and how through Him we can have a personal relationship with God and be led in the power of the Holy Spirit. Knowing that God exists isn't enough. People must learn that God is loving. He's not a wrathful God. He is a loving God. And that He sent His Son to demonstrate His love for us. That they may be shown how to accept God's forgiveness for their sins. You see, if we truly look at nature and the beauty that's in it, we actually, it actually reveals a God who is mighty. A God who is intelligent. A God who takes attention to the intricate details. A God of order and beauty. A God who controls power and forces. That's what we call general revelation. Everything that we see in the world that is good is a general revelation of God. But there is also special revelation. The Bible, the coming of Jesus Christ. That's how we learn about God's love, His forgiveness, and the promise of eternal life. God has graciously given us many sources that we might come to believe in Him. See, God reveals his divine nature and personal qualities through creation. Even though creation's testimony has been distorted by the fall, Adam's sin resulted in a divine curse upon the whole natural order. It says in uh, Genesis, thorns and thistles were the immediate result of his sin. That's why we have natural disasters since the beginning of time. There's famine, there's drought. It's interesting, especially in our world today, there can be drought in one region of the U.S. and then flooding in the other region. There can be hunger, problem of hunger in Africa, but then there's obesity in the Western world. How can that happen? Go figure that out, right? It's because of sin. It's because the enemy has dominion. But the book of Revelation says that the Lord shall come and renew the face of the earth. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nature itself is eagerly awaiting 
its redemption from the effects of sin.